The prehistory of Sri Lanka goes back 125,000 years and possibly even as far back as 500,000 years. The era spans the Paleolithic, Mesolithic and Early Iron Ages. Among the Paleolithic human settlements discovered in Sri Lanka, Pahiyangala, named after the Chinese traveler monk Faxian, which dates back to 37,000 BP, but Adamalina, 28,500 BP and Belilina, 12,000 BP, are the most important. In these caves, archaeologists have found the remains of anatomically modern humans which they have named Balang Odaman, and other evidence suggesting that they may have engaged in agriculture and kept domestic dogs for driving game. One of the first written references to the island is found in the Indian epic Ramayana which provides details of a kingdom named Lanka that was created by the divine sculptor Vishwakarma for Kibra, the lord of wealth. It is said that Kibra was overthrown by his demon stepbrother Ravana, the powerful emperor who built a mythical flying machine named Dandu Monara. The modern city of Wariapala is described as Ravana's airport. Early inhabitants of Sri Lanka were probably ancestors of the Veda people an indigenous people numbering approximately 2,500 living in modern-day Sri Lanka. The 19th century Irish historian James Emerson Tennant theorized that Gal, a city in southern Sri Lanka, was the ancient seaport of Tarshish from which King Solomon is said to have drawn ivory, peacocks, and other valuables. Ancient, according to the Mahavamsa, a chronicle written in Pali, the original inhabitants of Sri Lanka are the Yakshas and Nagas. But Sinhalese history traditionally starts in 543 BCE with the arrival of Prince Vijaya or Singha, a semi-legendary prince who sailed with 700 followers on eight ships 860 nautical miles to Sri Lanka from the southwest coast of what is now the Ra region of West Bengal. He established the kingdom of Tambapani, near modern-day Manar. Vijaya, Singha is the first of the approximately 189 native monarchs of Sri Lanka described in chronicles such as the Dipavamsa, Mahavamsa, Kulavamsa, and Rajavliya. See List of Sinhalese Monarchs. Sri Lankan dynastic history ended in 1815s, when the land became part of the British Empire. Ainaradaura. The Ainaradaura kingdom was established in 380 BCE during the reign of Pandu Kabaya of Ainaradaura. Thereafter, Ainaradaura served as the capital city of the country for nearly 1,400 years. Ancient Sri Lankans excelled at building certain types of structures, constructions, such as tanks, dagobas and palaces. Society underwent a major transformation during the reign of Devanampiyatissa of Ainaradaura with the arrival of Buddhism from India. In 250 BC, Mahinda, the son of the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka and Abhikhu, Buddhist monk, arrived in Mahintil, carrying the message of Buddhism. His mission won over the monarch, who embraced the faith and propagated it throughout the Sinhalese population. Succeeding kingdoms of Sri Lanka would maintain a large number of Buddhist schools and the monasteries and support the propagation of Buddhism into other countries in Southeast Asia. Sri Lankan Bhikkhus studied in India's famous ancient Buddhist university of Nalanda, which was destroyed by Bhaktiya Kilji. It is probable that many of the scriptures from Nalanda are preserved in Sri Lanka's many monasteries and that the written form of the Tipitaka, including Sinhalese Buddhist literature, were part of the University of Nalanda. In 245 BC, Bhikkhuni Sangamitta arrived with the Jayasri Mahabodhi tree, which is considered to be a sapling from the historical Bodhi tree under which Gautama Buddha became enlightened. It is considered the oldest human planted tree, with a continuous historical record, in the world. Bodhivamsa, Invasions Sri Lanka first experienced a foreign invasion during the reign of Zuratisa who was defeated by two horse traders named Sana and Guttika from South India. The next invasion came immediately in 205 BC by a Kola king named Ilara, who overthrew Asila and ruled the country for 44 years. Dutyutmanyu, the eldest son of the southern regional sub-king, Kavantissa, defeated Ilara in the Battle of Vijitabura. He built Ruwanwalaiza, the second stupa in ancient Sri Lanka, and the Lovamahapaya. During its two and a half millennia of existence, 
the Kingdom of Sri Lanka was invaded at least eight times by neighboring South Asian dynasties such as the Kola, Pandur, Chira, and Pallava. These invaders were all subsequently driven back. There also were incursions by the kingdoms of Kalinga, modern Odisha, and from the Malay Peninsula as well. Kala Ur and the Avukana Buddha statue were built during the reign of Dutch Usna. The fourth Buddhist council of Travada Buddhism was held at the Anuradhapura Mahavihara in Sri Lanka under the patronage of Vilagamba of Anuradhapura in 25 BCE. The council was held in response to a year in which the harvests in Sri Lanka were particularly poor and many Buddhist monks subsequently died of starvation. Because the Pali Canon was at that time oral literature maintained in several recensions by Dhammabhanakas, Dhammarasattas, the surviving monks recognized the danger of not writing it down so that even if some of the monks whose duty it was to study and remember parts of the canon for later generations died. The teachings would not be lost. After the council, palm leaf manuscripts containing the completed canon were taken to other countries such as Burma, Thailand, Cambodia, and Laos. Sri Lanka was the first Asian country known to have a female ruler, Anula of Anuradhapura, r. 47 to 42 BCE. Sri Lankan monarchs undertook some remarkable construction projects such as Sigiraya, the so called fortress in the sky. Built during the reign of Kashi Upa the first of Anuradhapura, who ruled between 477 and 495, the Sigiraya rock fortress is surrounded by an extensive network of ramparts and moats. Inside this protective enclosure were gardens, bonds, pavilions, palaces, and other structures. The 1,600-year-old Sigiraya frescoes are an example of ancient Sri Lankan art at its finest. It is one of the best preserved examples of ancient urban planning in the world. It has been declared by UNESCO as one of the seven World Heritage Sites in Sri Lanka. Among other structures, large reservoirs, important for conserving water in a climate with rainy and dry seasons, and elaborate aqueducts some with a slope as finely calibrated as one inch to the mile, are most notable. Bisokot Ur, a peculiar construction inside a dam, is a technological marvel based on precise mathematics that allows water to flow outside the dam, keeping pressure on the dam to a minimum. Ancient Sri Lanka was the first country in the world to establish a dedicated hospital. In my until in the 4th century, it was also the leading exporter of cinnamon in the ancient world. It maintained close ties with European civilizations including the Roman Empire. For example, Batikabaya, 22 BCE, 7th, sent an envoy to Rome who brought back red coral, which was used to make an elaborate net-like adornment for the ruin Walizaya. In addition, Sri Lankan male dancers witnessed the assassination of Caligula. When Queen Cleopatra sent her son Caesarion into hiding, he was headed to Sri Lanka. The Upasampada for Bhikkhunis, Buddhist nuns, first arrived in China when Devasara and ten other Bhikkhunis came from Sri Lanka. At the request of Chinese women and established the order there in 429. The medieval period of Sri Lanka begins with the fall of Anuradhapura Kingdom. In AD 993, the invasion of Kola Emperor Rajarua I forced the then Sri Lankan ruler Mahinda V to flee to the southern part of the country. Taking advantage of this situation, Rajendra I son of Rajara I, launched a large invasion in AD 1017. Mahindavi was captured and taken to India, and the Kalas sacked the city of Anuradhapura. Subsequently, they moved the capital to Pularua. This marked the end of the two great houses of dynasties of ancient Sri Lanka, the Maurya and the Lambakana. Following a 17-year-long campaign, Vijayabayu I successfully drove the Kola out of Sri Lanka in 1070 reuniting the country for the first time in over a century. Upon his request, ordained monks were sent from Burma to Sri Lanka to re-establish Buddhism, which had almost disappeared from the country during the Kola reign. During the medieval period, Sri Lanka was divided to three sub-territories, namely Ruhanu, Bihiti and Maya. Sri Lanka's irrigation system was extensively expanded during the reign of Parakrama Bayo the Great. 
AD 1153-1186. This period is considered as a time when Sri Lanka was at the height of its power. He built 1,470 reservoirs, the highest number by any ruler in the history, repaired 165 dams, 3,910 canals, 163 major reservoirs, and 2,376 mini reservoirs. His most famous construction is the Parakrama Samudra, the largest irrigation project of medieval Sri Lanka. Parakrama Bayu's reign is memorable for two major campaigns, in the south of India as part of a Pandyan War of Succession, and a punitive strike against the kings of Ramana, Myanmar, for various perceived insults to Sri Lanka. After his demise, Sri Lanka gradually decayed in power. In AD 1215, Kaling Amagha, a South Indian with uncertain origins, identified as the founder of the Jaffna Kingdom, invaded and captured the Kingdom of Pilaruwa with a 24,000 strong army sailed 690 nautical miles on 100 large ships from Kalinga. Unlike the previous invaders, he looted, ransacked, and destroyed everything in the ancient Enaradabara and Palaruwa kingdoms beyond recovery. His priorities in ruling were to extract as much as possible from the land and overturn as many of the traditions of Rajarata as possible. His reign saw the massive migration of native Sinhalese people to the south and west of Sri Lanka, and into the mountainous interior, in a bid to escape his power. Sri Lanka never really recovered from the impact of Kalingamagha's invasion. King Vijayabayu III, who led the resistance, brought the kingdom to Dambadniya. The north, in the meanwhile, eventually evolved into the Jaffna Kingdom. The Jaffna Kingdom never came under the rule of any kingdom of the south except on one occasion, in 1450, following the conquest led by King Parakramabayu VI's adopted son, Prince Sapumal. He ruled the north from AD 1450 to 1467. The next three centuries stating from 1215 were marked by kaleidoscopically shifting collections of kingdoms in south and central Sri Lanka, including Dambadniya, Yepehua, Gampala, Rayagama, Kote, Sitawaka, and finally, Kandy. Chinese Admiral Zheng He and his naval expeditionary force landed at Gal. Sri Lanka in 1409 and got into battle with the local king as the local king tried to capture him. Zheng He captured the local king and later released him. Zheng He erected a stone tablet inscription at Gal in three languages, Chinese, Tamil and Persian which is known as Gal Trilingual Inscription to commemorate his visit. The steel was discovered by S. H. Tumlin at Gal in 1911 and is now preserved in the Colombo National Museum. The early modern period of Sri Lanka begins with the arrival of Portuguese soldier and explorer Lourenço de Almeida, the son of Francisco de Almeida, in 1505. In 1517, the Portuguese built a fort at the port city of Colombo and gradually extended their control over the coastal areas. In 1592, after decades of intermittent warfare with the Portuguese, Vimaladama Juraya I moved his kingdom to the inland city of Kandy, a location he thought more secure from attack. In 1619, succumbing to attacks by the Portuguese, the independent existence of Jaffna Kingdom came to an end. During the reign of the Raja Singh II, Dutch explorers arrived on the island. In 1638, the king signed a treaty with the Dutch East India Company to get rid of the Portuguese who ruled most of the coastal areas. The following Dutch-Portuguese war resulted in a Dutch victory, with Colombo falling into Dutch hands by 1656. The Dutch remained in the areas they had captured thereby violating the treaty they had signed in 1638. An ethnic group named Burger people emerged in Sri Lankan society as a result of Dutch rule. The Kingdom of Kandy was the last independent monarchy of Sri Lanka. In 1595, Vimaladharma brought the sacred tooth relic, the traditional symbol of royal and religious authority amongst the Sinhalese, to Kandy and built the Temple of the Tooth. In spite of ongoing intermittent warfare with the Europeans, the kingdom survived. Later, a crisis of succession emerged in Kandy upon King Virana and Ray Sinner's death in 1739. He was married to a Telugu-speaking Nayaka princess from South India and was childless by her. Eventually, 
With the support of Bhikkhu Luita Zarankara, the crown passed to the brother of one of Naandre Sinha's princesses, overlooking the right of Anambu Bandara, Naandre Sinha's own son by Sinhali's concubine. The new king was crowned Sri Vijaya Raja Sinha later that year. Kings of the Nayaka dynasty launched several attacks on Dutch controlled areas, which proved to be unsuccessful. During the Napoleonic Wars, fearing that French control of the Netherlands might deliver Sri Lanka to the French, Great Britain occupied the coastal areas of the island, which they called Ceylon, with little difficulty in 1796. Two years later, in 1798, Rajadi Raja Sinha, third of the four Nayaka kings of Sri Lanka, died of a fever. Following his death, a nephew of Rajadi Raja Sinha, 18-year-old Kanasami, was crowned. The young king, now named Sri Vikrama Raja Sinha, faced a British invasion in 1803 but successfully retaliated. By then, the entire coastal area was under the British East India Company as a result of the Treaty of Amiens. But on 14 February 1815, Kandy was occupied by the British in the Second Kandyan War, finally ending Sri Lanka's independence. Sri Vikrama Raja Sinha, the last native monarch of Sri Lanka, was exiled to India. The Kandyan Convention formally ceded the entire country to the British Empire. Attempts by Sri Lankan noblemen to undermine British power in 1818 during the Uva Rebellion were thwarted by Governor Robert Brownrigg. Planter in rickshaw in front of the Maria Water Tea Factory near Gampilla, Car. 1895 The beginning of the modern period of Sri Lanka is marked by the Colebrook Cameron reforms of 1833. They introduced a utilitarian and liberal political culture to the country based on the rule of law and amalgamated the Kandyan and Maritime provinces as a single unit of government. An executive council and a legislative council were established later becoming the foundation of a representative legislature. By this time, experiments with coffee plantation were largely successful. Soon coffee became the primary commodity export of the country. Falling coffee prices as a result of the Depression of 1847 stalled economic development and prompted the governor to introduce a series of taxes on firearms, dogs, shops, boats, etc., and to reintroduce a form of Raja Karaya requiring six days free labor on roads or payment of a cash equivalent. These harsh measures antagonized the locals, and another rebellion broke out in 1848. A devastating leaf disease, Hemalaya vastatrix, struck the coffee plantations in 1869, destroying the entire industry within 15 years. The British quickly found a replacement, abandoning coffee. They began cultivating tea instead. Tea production in Sri Lanka thrived in the following decades. Large-scale rubber plantations began in the early 20th century. By the end of the 19th century, a new educated social class transcending race and caste arose through British attempts to staff the Ceylon civil service and the legal, educational, and medical professions. 95. New leaders represented the various ethnic groups of the population in the Ceylon Legislative Council on a communal basis. Buddhist and Hindu revivalism reacted against Christian missionary activities. The first two decades in the 20th century are noted by the unique harmony among Sinhalese and Tamil political leadership, which has since been lost. In 1919, Major Sinhalese and Tamil political organizations united to form the Ceylon National Congress under the leadership of Bonambala Maranakalam, pressing colonial masters for more constitutional reforms, but without massive popular support, and with the governor's encouragement for communal representation by creating a Colombo seat that dangled between Sinhalese and Tamils, the Congress lost momentum towards the mid-1920s. The Donuf Moore reforms of 1931 repudiated the communal representation and introduced universal adult franchise. The franchise stood at 4% before the reforms. This step was strongly criticized by the Tamil political leadership, who realized that they would be reduced to a minority in the newly created State Council of Ceylon, which succeeded the Legislative Council. In 1937, Tamil leader G.G. Ponambalam demanded a 50 to 50 representation, 50% 50 for the Sinhalese and 50% for other ethnic groups, in the State Council. However, 
This demand was not met by the Solbury reforms of 1944-45. Independence The Solbury constitution ushered in dominion status, with independence proclaimed on 4 February 1948. D. S. Sunanai Ake became the first Prime Minister of Ceylon. Prominent Tamil leaders like Bonam Balam and Daranaka Lamrahadeva joined his cabinet. The British Royal Navy remained stationed at Trincomalee until 1956. A countrywide popular demonstration against withdrawal of the rice ration, known as Hartle 1953, resulted in the resignation of Prime Minister Dudley Sananayak. S. W. R. D. Bandara Nayaka was elected Prime Minister in 1956. His three-year rule had a profound impact through his self-proclaimed role of defender of the besieged Sinhalese culture. He introduced the controversial Sinhala Only Act, recognizing Sinhala as the only official language of the government. Although partially reversed in 1958, the bill posed a grave concern for the Tamil community, which perceived in it a threat to their language and culture. The Federal Party FP, launched a movement of non-violent resistance, Satyagraha, against the bill, which prompted Bandranayaka to reach an agreement, Bandranayaka Chilvanyakam Pact, with S. J. V. Chilvanyakam, leader of the FP, to resolve the looming ethnic conflict. However, the pact proved ineffective in the face of ongoing protests by opposition and the Buddhist clergy. The bill together with various government colonization schemes, contributed much towards the political rancor between Sinhalese and Tamil political leaders. Bandranayaka was assassinated by an extremist Buddhist monk in 1959. Siramavo Bandranayaka, the widow of Bandranayaka, took office as Prime Minister in 1960, and withstood an attempted coup d'etat in 1962. During her second term as Prime Minister, the government instituted socialist economic polices, strengthening ties with the Soviet Union and China, while promoting a policy of non-alignment. In 1971, Ceylon experienced a Marxist insurrection, which was quickly suppressed. In 1972, the country became a republic named Sri Lanka, repudiating its dominion status. Prolonged minority grievances and the use of communal emotionalism as an election campaign weapon by both Sinhalese and Tamil leaders abetted a fledgling Tamil militancy in the north during the 1970s. The policy of standardization by the Siramavo government to rectify disparities created in university enrollment which was in essence an affirmative action to assist geographically disadvantaged students to obtain tertiary education, resulted in reducing the proportion of Tamil students at university level and acted as the immediate catalyst for the rise of militancy. The assassination of Jaffna Mayor Alfred Jurayipa in 1975 marked a crisis point. 